Good morning, folks. Only one place to start. The earthquake watch continued yesterday after the Solomon Islands rumble with the six-pointer striking Alaska. Also, before going to bed last night, I noticed 13 quakes all in one small area of California and knew that was more than could be expected. But when I awoke this morning, we had more than 30 earthquakes near Mammoth Lake and Long Valley, and they kept going throughout our morning checks. Eyes open there. The big story today is Earth gets lucky again. We only registered a long-duration sea flare, but the meat of the explosion was behind the limb, and it was magnificent. This is one of those eruptions you don't want to see coming our way. Coronagraph updates expected in a few hours. Mercury and Mars are directly in the line of fire of this blast. Looking at the sunspots reveals an uptick possible Earth facing today as well, as we've got delta spots up north right in the middle. In a couple areas down south where mixing prevails. I'd label both Delta if I were Noah. Also can't ignore the incoming northern spots and we'll keep watch for anything cresting on the south as well. If you can direct your focus to the dark coronal holes, we have our next incoming set becoming visible down south there, just the first edge of it. It is indeed the southern negative coronal hole swinging back around and the near earth space positive influence is about to give way to that negative. Terrific new animation out by NASA's Scientific Visualization Studio. It's part of CME Week, showing how an interplanetary shockwave from a solar storm smacks our magnetosphere. The first images from MAVEN are in. A spectral analysis of Mars taken from orbit. That's a lot of water ingredients. I wonder if they'll detect that massive eruption from the sun. MAVEN's first test is likely on its way. I want to take a moment to respond to the flood of emails suggesting I be upset about this. The Greenies fleeing from a conservative group that questions climate change. I'm not upset. This group falls into the extreme right-wing discourse that climate change is no issue and we shouldn't be regulating pollution and energy production. If you know anything about my dissent against the global warming story, it is that their ignoring the solar influence is likely the cause of their admitted 19 years of failed predictions during the cooling snap here on Earth. I darn sure am no fan of letting polluters run amok. I see two polar opposites fighting this fight and as usual, the middle ground will be the best place to stand. But speaking of polar opposites, northern ice has ended its melt and is building back up for the fall. It's 50% recovered from record lows two years ago. Meanwhile, the southern ice extent is peaked and heading down, but not before shattering the all-time high ice mark for a second straight year. They could use some of that extra water in the Aral Sea. 14 years separate the two images here, an amazing loss of resources in this area. Typhoon in the West Pacific, still slated to head north and miss Japan, bit of good news there. In the Eastern Pacific, we've got Rachel and it appears she'll swing out to sea as well. The Atlantic is seeing a low developing as it heads towards the Americas, long way to go however. Still got the Northwest Rainmaker going strong and another low in the Hudson drawing up through the Rockies from the relevant southern convergence tonight. Its trailing western chill will bring snow to parts of Canada while our storm warnings mostly follow the convergence and the northern flow. In Europe, got a big low making waves in the north, while multiple smaller lows will be active in the south along with the Mediterranean. The Norwegian coastline and the eastern block are under the highest watches. Using the pressure overlay, we see a white high blocking bad weather from most of Australia. While they're not so lucky to the east, New Zealand likely taking the brunt of this tonight. The Mobile Observatory project eclipsed the 10,000 mile mark yesterday. Tonight's event is in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and all details about it and future events can be found at www.observatoryproject.com. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.15 a.m. here in Wyoming. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.